Welcome to Chapter 4, which is PowerPoint 2 of 3 in Week 1. This chapter is going to look at the food regulations and standards for different aspects of the, our food supply in the United States. For this chapter, the two learning goals are 1. Be able to identify the main roles of government in the regulation of our food supply. This does not mean the individual roles of different organizations. This is more so tied to general functions, general roles of our government. Number two, be able to discern the responsibilities of the Food and Drug Administration from the responsibilities of the United States Department of Agriculture. These two agencies are the main two agencies from the federal level that are responsible for regulating our food supply. So understand the main difference, the single main difference between these two. Before we review the individual roles of government in our food supply, let's examine why it is so important for our government to have so many roles and the significance of each of these roles in our food supply. Foods are very susceptible to contamination. Contamination is no good. This can occur from bacteria, viruses, and physical contaminants. People will have some type of negative adverse health reaction. They will get sick, vomit, diarrhea, have nausea, um, or a whole host of other issues typically related to the GI system. It takes about four hours for foods to sit out above refrigeration temperatures and below cooking temperatures for microorganisms to multiply and reach potentially dangerous levels. That's not much time, so if it's kept in the temperature range of 40 degrees to 140 degrees, there's a good chance that over a period of just four hours total that it will reach microorganism content that is so high that it can cause illness in us. Because of this, because of this very high susceptibility, there are multiple steps that must be monitored from the farm to the table to ensure that the foods that we eat are safe. So foods have a high level of risk. Let's take a look at the food production chain to see where we actually have these risks and what needs to be monitored. First, we start off at the farm. So we raise animals. We raise fruits and vegetables. They have to be picked or killed and then sent to processing facilities where they are there packaged and ready for actual distribution. They're sent from processing centers to distribution centers which store these foods and then send them out to retail stores which are grocery stores or to restaurants. If they go to retail stores there's going to be one more step in the food production system and that's going to be taking these foods home cooking them at home and preparing them for our consumption. At the restaurant, we go there, we're done at that level. But either way, there's many steps at which food is going to be processed, it's going to be handled by different people, it's going to touch different equipment, and because of all those factors, because of all those things that are going to be in touch with the food, not to mention the fact that it's going to be at different temperatures in some of those time frames, there's going to be a very high risk for that food being contaminated. So as we go through this chapter, we're going to look at what the government does. They must monitor each aspect of food production to ensure that we have a safe food supply. Now as you can imagine, the government has many different roles in our food system. They are responsible for food inspection and safety. So are the foods produced in a very safe manner? Are they free of microbial, virus, or physical contamination? Are they safe for us to eat? Food grading. The government looks at foods such as fruits, vegetables, meats, and eggs and says they are on a certain level of quality. So there are ideal characteristics for each of these types of foods Food grading means that the government is looking at whether or not these foods meet those specific guidelines. And then labeling. If you look at all foods with the exception of fruits and vegetables and maybe a few others, you're going to see 
a package that has a title of the food, it has specific information on that package. All food packages must contain certain labeling information on the front and they must have certain nutrition facts on the back of the label. Food additives. These are added to increase flavor. They are added to increase shelf life. These are monitored if they are not safe and we'll get into more detail with that in a future slide. And then finally, there are many different steps that are involved in food production. Again, the government is going to take a look at what we do during each of these steps, during farming, during raising the foods, during packaging and processing these foods, and then delivering these foods to the restaurant table or to grocery stores, the government makes sure that we are following and using safe practices. The government, again, plays many different roles in our food supply, and it plays these roles at a local, a state, and a national level. What we're going to do for this chapter is look specifically at the role of government at a national level, and so we're going to look at the two major players involved in the food production system from the national government. These are the United States Department of Agriculture and the Food and Drug Administration. The Food and Drug Administration is responsible for reviewing the processes that are used to produce foods. So the Food and Drug Administration does not necessarily look at the actual foods. It does not examine the actual foods. It more so looks at and establishes guidelines for how we produce our foods. So the different areas that it's responsible for are food package labeling, pesticide regulation, when it comes to ensuring that it is safe for consumers. And remember that one. Also it looks at food additives and food safety. And we're going to talk more about food additives and food safety in future slides. Let's take a closer look at the role of the FDA in monitoring food additives. What is a food additive? This is any substance that becomes part of a food product when it is added to the food. So food additives are not going to be a part of the original food. They are added to increase flavor and they are added to increase shelf life. The FDA examines all of the food additives on the market and if there is overwhelming evidence that suggests that these foods are not safe, they are not allowed in our food supply, the foods that are safe are giving a GRAS, or the Generally Recognized as Safe designation. A few examples of different food additives include salt, sugar, spices, food coloring, aspartame, and thickeners. Note that all of these have different roles. Salt, sugar, aspartame, spices, those are specifically related to taste. Food coloring is related to appearance, thickeners is related to baking and adjusting the texture of foods. Salt and spices can also be used to enhance shelf life, but again note that there are multiple reasons that you can use food additives in a product. The Food and Drug Administration does play a role in food safety. This role is very different and unique from the United States Department of Agriculture. The role of the FDA is more so in regards to food production, so it examines production techniques and how we handle foods. What are the processes and roles that are established by different companies to assure that food safety practices are being followed? Meanwhile, the USDA it looks at the foods, so it examines whether or not a food is susceptible to microorganism contamination or whether or not that food actually does have micro microorganism contamination. It also examines the quality of the food. The FDA does not do that. More so looks at how we handle the food. So how we handle the foods at all stages of production and ensures that appropriate sanitation guidelines and safe food practices are in practice at each of these locations. Again, the United States Department of Agriculture's role 
in food production is a little bit different than that of the FDA. So it actually examines the individual foods, inspecting them for contamination or risk for causing disease in humans. It also looks at the quality of foods and through examining quality, it's able to establish a specific grade for that food. And then finally, the USDA is responsible for the organic designation. There are three different levels of organic. There is made with organic ingredients, in which 70% of that product is organic or more. Organic, which is where 95% of that product is organic or 100% organic, which means that 100% of the ingredients used in the processing of that food are organic. The USDA and FDA have major roles in the regulation of our food supply, but there are a variety of other different government organizations from the state to local to federal level that have a significant role in the monitoring and safety of our food supply. Note that the FDA, they monitor pesticides that cause problems related to human health. The Environmental Protection Agency looks at the other side of regulation of pesticides. It makes sure that, farming, that farmers and food companies do not release harmful levels of pesticide to the environment. So the FDA looks at pesticides as they can damage the human body. The EPA looks at pesticides as damaging the environment. The CDC tracks foodborne illnesses that have already occurred to determine the source of the outbreak. So the CDC acts as investigators. And then state and local governments are more responsible for looking at local individual establishments that sell food. So they inspect food and safety practices at restaurants and at grocery stores.